welcome to the podium Lily Tang Williams. Lily. Well, I'm a little bit too short to stand behind this podium. So I like to get myself out here because I like to use my arms. And uh, um, could you go to the previous page? I'm going to just try to see my, oh, that's interesting. That one doesn't show. Can you all hear me? My microphone's working? Yes. OK. All right, we'll go to the next page then. My first one didn't work. Yeah. Well, my name is Lily Tom Williams, married to a guy who was born and grew up in Texas. That's why my last name is Williams. But I always put Tang there because if you Google Lily Williams, there's like hundreds of them. If you do Lily Tang Williams, I'm proud to say I'm the only one in the country. <laughs> so make it easy for you to find me. This is a map of China. You know the largest population in the world, 1.4 billion cells live there under the largest authoritarian government. But we are the second largest economy in the world, not because of communism under Mao, where I grew up under, not because of socialism with the Chinese characteristics. It's like an anti seat After the collapse of the Chinese economy, almost collapsed after Mao's death, they adopted a limited capitalism, free market. But they have to have fancy name for it. It's a Chinese economy with a socialist characteristics, whatever. But I remember how China become richer, and that's another story. But today I'm going to focus on my life under Mao. My mom and dad are typical proletarians, illiterate working parents who work for state factories six days a week. So we went to government school six days a week. There's no time for family. There's no time for civil activities. There's no time for religion. Because communism was the only allowed religion. Mao was only the god we have to show loyalty to. All religious beliefs were destroyed during the Cultural Revolution. My dad is that kind of human being who full of dignity. Doesn't matter how poor he is. He cannot even read a one word sentence of Chinese because he was born with his five other children, but parents died. He became an orphan at the age of five. So I never met my grandparents from my father's side. And my dad, if you look at him, he's typical Sichuanese who Muscular, strong, not very tall, but he's just full of human dignity. He wants party. He wants bosses to respect him. He's hardworking. He does not want to treat like one of the animals. But they did treat him like that. Every Father's Day, I will wrote a story about my father who grew up in communist China, who fought, who worked very hard to feed his family. And he did not end up well. But at least I brought him to this country. He loves America. And my mom is the opposite personality who would beg on her knees for government factory salary increases. You know about communism. It's a communism. State controls everything. No private property. No human rights. I have never heard of a private company concept until in college later. So everybody works for state. Everybody belongs to the state, including your children. I think we maybe owned one. Maybe my dad owned one bicycle years later after he saved money for it. After six days a week, you cannot even feed your children. You live on food rationing coupons. You were think workers are the proletarians. We should rule the country. We should get a maximum benefits under communism. It's a lie. Utopian is a lie. My mom and dad, because they're in literary working class, they cannot get enough food rationing coupons from local government to feed us. To give you an idea how much we are allowed to eat, 2.7 pounds of protein per month. 
for family of five. Let's include the eggs and all the meat. If you have a birthday, you get a one egg. Hey, great kid. Time to be happy. You get the egg today. No toys. Nothing else. Just have some meat and egg. It was your treat. So that's me. If you want to go take a portrait, pay money, go to government-run studio to take little family portraits. Here's our typical food rationing coupon. You get that from local government. And not just food coupons to buy a clothes, fabrics to make family clothing. OK, here's the fabrics coupon. And here's the, you know, this coupon, that coupon, sugar, weight, rice, everything. You wonder where is the productivity? How come we're short of stuff? We work six days a week. Where is the productivity? One brand of Chinese government brand of detergent, soap, and toilet paper. And we run, to run out of toilet paper too. And to tell you about only free stuff, I remember we got is my parents' community housing. How would you like to live in that community housing? Eight families share one bathroom and one big hole about six feet wide and long, cut half in the middle with a divider, one hole for women, one hole for guys. When you got wrong, you got wrong. You cannot wait in line. So you have a little portable party in your apartment. You fill that up and you go down outside. And when light bulb goes out, nobody cares to change it because nobody owns anything. It's a community housing. Have a little flashlight if you can afford it. I did not have one. I was very scared to go to the bathroom at night. There are two little breaks over the big hole. If you're not careful, you fall backwards, you'll be buried in human waste. Nobody can hear you. It was my nightmares even after I came to America for 10 years. I dreamed about that bathroom in the summer, bugs all over. Worms or on the brakes you have to step on. If you're not careful, you pop them and they make this horrible noise. It gives you nightmares, gives you goosebumps when you think about it. Then they come dig out once a few months to dump into countryside grow food. It smells horrible. Another thing about the community housing is it's got a mud floor. Have you ever lived in an apartment, even the poorest here? It's mud floor grow mushrooms in winter. Don't eat those mushrooms, will kill you. And, uh, and guess what? No heating, no AC. Central government divided the line through Yangtze River. If you live in north, you have heat. So you don't freeze to death. But if you live in south of Yangtze River, nothing. Even though it can be below zero. On my left foot, there's a big scar because it was so cold. I had to, you know, your blood froze and then when it's warm, it gets really itchy, you scratch it, you get an infection. I got infected for so many years, there's a big scar on my left foot to as a, actually evidence of my childhood. And the next picture, our elementary school picture. Talk about school, right? And uh, you will see, this is me in the front. This is the girl in the front without a red scar in front of me on the left, first one. I was not happy. And people say, Lily, you're wearing ugly pants. I say, ugly pants? We get a new clothes once a year in Chinese New Year. That's my best pants. I wasn't happy because I did not get to wear my Red scarf, just because at the age of seven, I told my girlfriend, I will be the first one to join in red, like a young pioneer, because I'm best student, and I'm a red child. You know, government divide people into 10 classes, five red, five black. If you Google it, I'm the red child, because my parents are in the working class. But even that, I overtrusted my girlfriend to say I would be the first one to join Young Pioneer. She told my teacher. That's our school system. Everybody becomes government spies to tell on each other. Only trust authority. Your principals, your teachers. And uh, so my teacher called me into office. You cannot go to join Young Pioneer because you are not humble. You are too confident. This is our collective society. You need to be like everybody else. Keep your head down. Just do the right things. I learned an unforgettable life lesson. Conform, 
I will do well in China. Rebel, I will go to hell. And uh, I did not wear Young Pioneer scarf until one year later, but I learned my lesson. This is a picture of me in middle school. Lots of people have seen this picture on my social media. Talk about child data collection in Chinese system. Chinese government have a two fundamental system to track their citizens from birth to death. When your parents work for state factory, want to get married, they need to get the permission, they need to get the blessings. And the party, even because my dad was party member, they will even make sure my mom is right fit for him. Tell you who you should marry, you have to have the right class to marry each other. If you marry black class, you are red, your life is good, you, you cannot get a promotion. So with blessing, they got married, and then they go to registry, uh, registration station at a local police to say we're married. Here's our household address. We form a household, and they give you a little brochure, like a little booklet. Use that. You go open bank account. You go get your food rationing coupons. And you cannot just pack up leave without permission. You are bound to live at the address and work for the same employer. And when your child is born, you add each child. But by the time I go to school, they have my own file now. It's called a student file. Everything inside is sacred. I was never allowed to see it. Your parents are never allowed to see it. Now public digitize the file, and everybody can share with the government agencies and school leaders and your future employers, except yourself and your parents. So you don't own yourself. State owns you. And with student child file, they take pictures for us every school year. They want to know what you look like. You know children change a lot, especially the interpuberty. You all of a sudden, you just look different. They want to know what you look like. And you put it into student file every year. So I have lots of those pictures once a year to show my growth. By having private picture like this to keep it privately, I could be criticized for being capitalist. My little, I have a little capitalist like the human nature. I want to keep my photos for human beings, for human memories. And that seems like a crime under communism. How can you be so individualistic? You want to keep your photos. And to talk about Karl Marx. You know that Mao totally adopted Karl Marx communism. When we go to March as a school camp, so we have to hold the Lenin's portrait, Karl Marx portrait, and the Mao's portrait. And we hold this little, little, little books. How many of you are familiar with that? Bought from Amazon, bilingual. You can order Amazon for almost everything. And uh, people believe in Karl Marx so much. They forgot what the Chinese ancestors are, where we come from. So people used to kidding themselves whenever somebody died. You don't say, I'm going to see my ancestors now. No, you say, I'm going to meet with the Karl Marx. <laughs> How crazy that is to the Chinese history. We have so many great artists and, and, and philosophers. We have to go see Karl Marx when we die. <laughs> oh, a Westerner. <laughs> And look at the girls during the Cultural Revolution. I tell students this all the time. Not just because I like Chinese silk dress, right? Because I was deprived to wear something like this. Remember Mao's four old campaign? Four old idea, old books, old costume? If you wear one of the jackets, silk jacket I'm wearing now, it's a capitalist lifestyle. It's banned. You can get into trouble. You cannot join Red Guard. Don't you think those girls look attractive? No. You wear approved hairstyles. Your hair cannot be laying down past your shoulder, cannot braid piggy tails, ponytails, or ugly short hairs like boys. If you dare to show your body curves or beautiful clothes, you will be criticized. You dare to show love to another classmate, Dating is strictly banned. We were not out to date. Even after we went to college first year, our party, you know, every school department has a party committee, communist party committee, one party rule. They tell you, don't think about your spouse. When you are old enough, we will get your spouse. <laughs> Focus on study right now. 
There's one couple fall in love the first day in school. Oh, they went through hell in first year of college. And uh, so this I want to show you. That's our typical school day. When you go to school, indoctrination camps, for so many years, you, you hold the chair my mouth, little red books. You know, like you see in the movies, long never chair my mouth, 10,000 years, double 10,000 years, another 10,000 years. As a child, we never challenge that. I don't think even adults challenge that. It's a whole country, environment. You dare not to say that? Mao become like a god. Once Mao took over China's one-party rule, and uh, through Red Guard's help, he has to, to say, hey, you kids all go to countryside. Here's our dancing to say, long live Chen Mai Mao, thank you Chen Mai Mao. And my uncle generation is a Red Guard generation. We're sent to countryside for 10 years. You dare to say no as parents, you go to concentration camps. My favorite uncle came home, 28 years old, no, no skill, no high school education. I finally start challenge, who lied to me? Mao died when I was 12, how could he die? He was like a god, right? 10,000 years. I start to question what happened. Of course, party say he made a mistake, so the, all the universities reopened. And uh, I was raised as Buddhist, and Buddhists opened their temples to say, OK, it's OK to go to say, Buddha, bless me. I was going to school, so I asked for blessing first time. And in school, here's another registration paper to show you evidence of data collection of a child. Now it's a college student file with my update picture, all my extended families. How dare you to become dissident, right? You put your entire family into jeopardy. But China goes through transition that time. We got the Santa Claus coming now, say ho, 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 where people still wearing the British Army art to dance. And, and uh, it was a traditionally Renaissance for 80s. It was a great time. And then we started bonfire and campaign, start to say freedom, democracy, and human rights. And we got Rachel, we have a Koda film now. We can dance in disco. Western, you know, dance. Well, if you body any way you want, nobody's gonna tell you. You have to say yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. You know. <laughs> and Americans coming, foreign students coming. And one American student told me about the Declaration of Independence. That's how my light bulb came on. Wow, there's a country called America. We have a guaranteed constitutional rights, and the freedom of speech and freedom of religion. I was a the concept I've never heard of. I have individual rights. So by the time I realized my future in China is very limited, and I cannot just fulfill my dream in China, I start to think about coming to America. I've become faculty member of law school, but I had to give that up because I could not teach whatever I want to teach. 1988, I came to Austin, Texas airport. I was two months before my 24th birthday. And that was my happiest day of my life. And this is meat. The mouse said, if you can eat this meat with potatoes, roasted beef with potatoes every day, communism will be fully you know, fulfilled. I can eat that every day if I want to, but not in a communist country, in a free country. And this is our best apartment. My brother still lives there. And this is my dream home in Colorado. We just left two months ago, moved to New Hampshire. Four and a half bathrooms. I don't have to worry about that big hole in the ground. <laughs> Which one would you choose to live in, right? I have students ask me that question all the time. I feel so blessed. This is my new country, my new family, American husband with three children. And uh, I feel so blessed and I decided I need to become active citizen. I voted first time and I testified first time with my broken English. And I rallied first time against Common Core, centralized education, <laughs> right. And uh, I tell people a story of a peaceful protest in Tiananmen Square, 1989, students were crushed. And the Tiananmen tank man disappeared. And the Hong Kong protests were watching every day to see what's gonna happen to their fate. 
So what happens when you testify, you vote, you talk to state representative, you protest, nothing happens, a government becomes tyranny. So I tell people there's one right you cannot compromise forever in America. It's called our second amendment right. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I once was a communist slave before. I will never be one again in this country. Thank you. Thank you.